Coming up, HHO generators for your car. The dark side of the lightest element in the universe. None other than hydrogen, the power source for the sun. Can you generate this in your own engine bay and save money on fuel? Or is it all just pseudo-scientific bullshit? I get asked about HHO generators all the time. Here's the most recent such question from a guy named Mark. I have been watching many videos on YouTube regarding the use of HHO generators in vehicles. Could you please give us the pros and cons on this? I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Aussie new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. And now, Jihad on bullshit, captain's log, star date, 3.14159265. Executive summary, HHO generators are bullshit because they do not work. They do not work because, scientifically, they cannot work. You will not save any money, you will not save any fuel. You can buy a so-called HHO generator on eBay, etc. Like this one, claiming to produce four litres a minute, four, for a mere... 250 bucks, slightly under. So if you've got the hots for what's in the box with the dots, you should know that such a device probably will use electricity from your car and electrolyze water to produce both hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Two litres of hydrogen for every litre of oxygen, because that's just how water rolls when it decomposes electrolytically. You probably can pump it into your engine and burn it. Combustion converts it back into water and releases energy. There's already a hell of a lot of water in exhaust, so it's not going to be a problem. And this might make you feel really good. It might emotionally empower you in some perceived asymmetric conflict with big evil oil. But it will not save you any fuel, and it could even be very, very dangerous. Here's why. Spoiler alert, we have to use the T word. It's a big, scary word, too. Thermodynamics. Spooky. There are four laws numbered perversely 0 through 3, inclusive, defining the behaviour of energy everywhere. The Leatherman surge of heat and energy interaction. That's what they are. We only need to use one of those laws, though, thankfully. Number one. The first law of thermodynamics says that if you put a box around a system and energy cannot get into or out of the box, then the total amount of energy in the system doesn't change. And that seems reasonable, and it is observationally true essentially everywhere. Let's leave sort of the big bang and black holes out of it temporarily and keep our feet here firmly on planet Earth. The first law is essentially the anything that sounds too good to be true almost certainly is law. So let's put one of those boxes around your car. No energy in, no energy out, and let's make it an ideal car with an ideal engine where all of the energy and the fuel gets turned into motion. 100% efficiency, no losses. Wouldn't that be nice? In this case, every kilojoule of energy in the fuel gets converted with 100% efficiency into motion. And the first law is very happy indeed. But obviously there are losses in the real world, right? Otherwise, you'd never need to fill up at the fuel station. Engines, really good ones, are really only about 25% efficient. You lose 75% of the energy in the fuel, mainly as internal friction and waste heat. Mainly as heat. There's rolling resistance, transmission losses, aerodynamic drag, and of course the driver ultimately hits the brakes, which turns all of your residual kinetic energy into waste heat, which you throw outside the box by bleeding it off into the surrounding air. In other words, the box leaks energy that you lose like a sieve, which is why car owners need to keep filling up the fuel tank. But the first law is still happy with this because it allows you to pump energy into the box or drain energy away from the box, just like water going into and out of a dam. The only thing you're not allowed to do is magic up energy conveniently from nowhere, like Harry Potter with a wand in the box. That's not allowed. So let's just put a box around the engine. 
You've got chemical potential energy coming in from the fuel. You've got rotational kinetic energy leaving the box via the crankshaft and a bunch of mechanical losses, mainly waste heat, leaving via the radiator and the exhaust pipe. Okay? Let's put a magic HHO generator inside the box with the engine. It's exactly the same scenario here. Energy in from the fuel, energy out from the crank and waste heat leaking like a sieve. Nothing actually changes. So unless the HHO generator has a means of reducing the waste heat or other losses, it will never be able to deliver more energy at the crankshaft. And it is impossible for the HHO generator to do this. And here's why. The electricity required to electrolyze the water to split it up into so-called HHO comes from the car's battery. And the electricity in the battery comes from the alternator, which is driven by the engine. So let's put the battery alternator and HHO generator in a thermodynamic energy box, just for kicks. Energy comes into the system from the belt driving the alternator. Energy goes out in the form of chemical energy in the HHO ready to burn. The belt loses about 10% of its input energy in friction. The alternator is also not especially efficient because efficiency is not really as important as robustness in the context of alternator design and operation. But a typical alternator might be capable of producing a maximum of 120 amps at 13.5 volts. That's about 1.6 kilowatts. And trust me on this, you cannot put a 1.6 kilowatt electrolyzer under the bonnet. <laughs> Bad idea. Because there is not anything like this spare electrical capacity in the system available for you to exploit with any accessory. You will kill the electrical system if you try this. So this is an entirely generous proposition for the HHO generator. The best small-scale industrial alkaline electrolyzers, which an eBay electrolyzer is frankly not even close to being, is about 50% efficient. So the chemical potential energy in the so-called HHO coming out of the most overly generous underbonnet electrolyzer is going to be about 800 watts. That's about one horsepower. And of course, if you burn it in the engine, about 75% gets chucked out of that box because engines are only 25% efficient, leaving you with about 200 watts of actual motive power at the crankshaft. So just to be perfectly clear on this, you need to burn enough petrol to produce 3,000 watts of crankshaft power to drive a belt which loses about 10% of the way to the alternator. The alternator gets 2,700 watts of belt power and produces about 1,600 watts of electricity. The so-called HHO generator turns 1,600 watts of electricity into 800 watts of combustible chemicals, and the engine turns those chemicals into 200 watts of motive power. And this is the most unrealistically powerful HHO generator you could hope to install. So we started with 3 kilowatts of motive power at the crank, and we turned it into 200 watts of motive power with an HHO generator. Speaking as an engineer, this is not a blueprint for increased efficiency. An HHO generator is nothing more than a device allowing you to throw even more energy out of the box before it gets to the wheels. It's hard to make power at the crank. It's really stupid to throw it away once you get it there. And that is really all that an HHO generator does. A system offering you the unique opportunity to throw 94% of the energy it consumes straight outside the box. Yes! And this is being exceptionally generous. Unrealistically generous. Just leave the HHO generator out of the car and instead of 200 watts of motive power, you get 3 kilowatts. That's a plan. And to all of you who say, ah, but the HHO generator uses waste electricity, excess electricity from the alternator, spare electricity, I am so sorry that you are so profoundly scientifically illiterate. There is no spare electricity in a functioning alternator. The current ratings are the maximum the alternator will produce. The actual production of electricity by an alternator is a direct response to electrical load. In other words, 
Alternators produce zero electricity when they are not powering anything. If you flick on all the lights, the front and rear demisty, you crank the fan on the HVAC, well, they start working hard, those alternators, and that's how they roll. All of you budding engineers saying that you could use regenerative braking to make the electricity to electrolyze the water, well, yeah, you could do this. But in practice, it's just easier and more efficient to brake regeneratively and store that energy in a battery because fewer losses. You could plaster the roof, the bonnet and the boot with photovoltaic cells and use that too, yeah. But incident sunlight is only about one kilowatt for every square metre and there's maybe two square metres of viable real estate on an average car. And the cells, well, they're only going to be about 20% conversion efficiency. So that's going to be 400 watts of input electricity, but only when you are parked in bright sunlight. Probably not worth doing, really, and it would be a visual abomination. Let's not forget that. So apart from being completely ineffective, an HHO generator will cost you money. It'll probably shorten the life of your alternator, void your warranty and pose a significant fire risk. An ideal stoichiometric mixture of hydrogen gas and oxygen gas plumbed by some amateur through the engine bay in close proximity to all that heat, vibration, airflow and electricity. What could possibly go wrong? And when the insurance investigator gets done with looking into that inevitable fire, he discovers the charred remnants of your ill-fated Dalian with thermodynamics. Good luck getting the insurance company to pay your claim. The differential confirmation that these things are bullshit is simply that car makers do not install them routinely as a means of extracting greater efficiency from an internal combustion engine. 20, maybe 30 years ago, someone invented electronic fuel injection. Carburetors were thrown out and it's been adopted on all engines because it achieves essentially this efficiency increase, greater efficiency. If HHO worked and you thought of it, you'd tender it out for eight figures and a car maker would buy it. But unfortunately, it does not work. These things are 13 different flavours of bad idea, neatly gift wrapped in a gobsmacking thermodynamic fraud, waiting for some scientifically illiterate Muppet to hit buy now. Do not be that Muppet. I'm John Cadogan. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.